So now let's dive into the black hat. The black hat stands for caution. So it keeps us from doing things that are illegal, immoral, unprofitable, or polluting, and so on. The black hat is quite natural to us because uh, thousands, of, tens of thousands of years of evolution have trained us to be very careful. And it's much costlier to eat the wrong berry or trust the wrong strangers than to miss out on an opportunity to find a food, right? So we, we're very naturally good at finding fault and flaws in plants. And so that way it's also the opposite of the yellow hat, which is all about finding solutions and optimism and benefits. So we're in the black hat, somebody might say, I really think this idea in general is good, but I'm really worried that it will take all of our staff's attention to implement it in the other important business areas will be sidetracked through that. Or you might say, we both like this house very much. That is strong red hat thinking. Let's use our black hats for a moment. So what are the main benefits of the black hat? I think in a planned sequence, it's invaluable to have a set time and place for the black hat set aside. Uh, first, it then allows everyone, including the person who put forward an idea, to take a critical lens and try to find flaws or potential dangers, things that need to be avoided in order for the plan to be successful. And second, it allows people that have a natural tendency to be very critical and negative to sort of know that there's that time to be critical and then they can use other parts of their brain, for example, wearing the other hats, to be more creative, to be more open-minded and they don't have to worry about uh, being critical all the time because their voice will be heard wearing the black hat. So now let's look at a couple of ways that we can actually use the black hat in practice. Here it's important to note that the black hat, unlike the red hat, always needs to be supported by reasons and is a logical hat. All right, so an example exchange might be, I don't like the idea of lowering prices. The other person might say, that is red hat thinking. I'd like to have your black hat thinking on this. Fine. In our experience, which I can show you with sales figures, the lowering of prices has not resulted in ad enough additional sales to offset the reduction in profit margin. Additionally, our competition has tended to also lower their prices, further making it harder for us to make a profit here. The other way we can use the black hat is to pretend it's the future and then look back on why a plan has failed. This is where the technique I learned at the Center for Applied Rationality called Murphy Jitsu can be incredibly helpful. It basically allows us to pretend it's three months, six months into the future, whenever the deadline for our plan's execution would be. And then pretend and you visualize that you're there and you look back and you try to ask yourself, how likely would it have been that this plan succeeded or failed? And if you're very surprised that the plan didn't succeed, then you know something is flawed in your plan and you can ask yourself, well, if it failed, what most likely was the reason for it failing? And this then you can use to actually fix your plan and then do this uh, algorithm over and over until you find uh, a, a plan that you're endorsing. So the black hat is very, very useful to do something called a pre-mortem or you know, look into the future and see what could have gone wrong and then fix that in the current plan. Now, one important uh, nuance of using a black hat is knowing whether you're in a design stage of a plan or in an assessment stage, right? When you're in the design stage is when, you know, the other hats, the yellow hat, the green hat are laying out lots of ideas and you want to see, oh, well, this idea could have a flaw here or this could go wrong here. And then you can use the other hats again to sort of mitigate these problems and fix some of these problems, right? So there it's very useful to look at all the possible things that could go wrong. Even if 95, even if a plan has 95% benefit and 5% flaws, it's, it's valuable to spend some time on these flaws just to see um, what could go wrong. On the other hand, once you're in the assessment stage and a plan has 95% benefits and only 5% flaws, it probably should be more important to look at mostly the benefits and, and acknowledge the, the downsides, but 95% of the plan carries benefits. We might want to take that bet and uh, go forward with a plan. We don't want to get lost in that one reason why the plan potentially could go wrong. The last thing I want to say here is that the most important thing about the black hat is to be wary of not overusing it. A lot of us have a tendency to be very critical a lot of the time of others' ideas and plans and so forth. So it's a very powerful hat and it needs to be used very consciously 
but make sure you don't overuse it. Otherwise, you will kill ideas way too early and you're never gonna try any, any interesting and new ideas. A couple of questions to get you started with the black hat. For example, does it fit the white hat? Does it fit the data that we have? Does it go along with our values and ethics? Is it profitable? Is it legal? Is it, uh, do client, will clients like this? And so forth, right? These are the cautious questions you can ask. So that was the black hat. Let's quickly summarize what we've learned. Black hat stands for caution, finding dangers and flaws in plans. We want to make sure that we use it sparingly. It's a very important hat, but we don't want to overuse it. It's a logical hat, so we always have to give it reasons, unlike with the red hat. And then finally, we want to be aware of the nuance between the design stage, where we may use it a lot and try to fix the plan, make the plan as good as possible, and the assessment stage, where if your plan is overwhelmingly good, we don't want to get too much lost in the 5% of a plan that potentially could go wrong or potentially could uh, you know, diminish the returns of an idea a little bit. So that was it, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about the yellow hat.